um, an emergency situation that we've got to grow together through. Um, and you've heard some of the background and um, some of the initial information from the city about why you're here. Uh, we want to walk through um, a couple of different things, which is the overview of this process that you've uh, uh, committed yourselves to and that we've invited you to be a part of, um, and some of the contours of that, some of the background, and how we're gonna do the work together um, so that as we start looking into how we're gonna work with these materials and what we've heard, we start moving towards uh, an idea of what's important and what decisions we wanna make. Um, we want to just stay grounded in what our task is, how we've arrived at it, and some of the ways that we want to work together. And so I'm going to start this by highlighting once again the panel mandate, which um, kind of got lost in the shuffling back and forth uh, due to the, to, the, to the gas leak. So we're here to work together to develop a set of criteria to guide the evaluation and selection of a preferred grade separated east-west arterial road and to recommend a route for the arterial road with the rationale for the recommendations and suggestions for any remaining concerns. So the reason that we bring this back in is because um, there's gonna be a lot of things that come up. We're gonna hear a lot of information. It can take us in a very unexpected and surprising uh, tangents and discussions and otherwise, but we wanna remember that ultimately these are the things that we've been asked to do and this is what we're trying to accomplish together. And so um, when we're talking about how to make use of our time and, what we're, and the ways that we're structuring our discussions and our deliberations, um, it's in order to fulfill this, this task. And to think a little bit about how we're gonna do that, um, I'm gonna ask Susanna to, to take over. We spent the summer and the spring and the fall having in-depth conversations with a wide range of people, asking what are the important issues? What should we be thinking about? What are the things that the panelists need to know? And those conversations structured the work that we're about to do. And so we organized the work, the learning that we're gonna do into six categories. Transportation performance, because it is a road. Cost and constructability the impacts on businesses along the routes and also those that get served and, and move through and transport their people and, people and goods along those route, roads. Community livability, how do the people who spend time here get impacted? Our parks, recreational spaces, community gardens. And then lastly, some of the public and other community facilities. And you saw, for example, the um, overviews of the hospital. That's one of the things. So um, we are gonna spend the first four days learning deeply and it's going to be um, a little bit of time for us to digest those pieces and as we digest each topic you're going to be creating those evaluation criteria that you saw in the mandate we're going to be creating lists of advantages and drawbacks and those we will use to evaluate the route um, going through these six factors right so um the way that we're going to do this work together is, as we continue to hear um, information from different presenters and different experts, we're gonna ask you to work together um, afterwards to deliberate and pull out what you see as important in pieces of that information. And so um, that's going to be the advantages and drawbacks of each proposed alignment as it relates to the different things that we're gonna be hearing about, things like cost or constructability or transportation performance. Um, we're going to be looking at and thinking about dis preferred design enhancements to the arterial alignments, um, and then moving towards rationale for and against each alignment, given the advantages and drawbacks that you're all going to be surfacing uh, together as you go. And this is an important place to start thinking about that we're asking everyone here to participate in identifying the advantages and drawbacks uh, around these criteria, for each of the uh, um, potential arterial alignments, regardless of your actual position of what, what you like or, or don't like about it. That's part of our work together, is to develop those, uh, develop that for the folks who aren't here so that they can see what you collectively pull out as really critical information for them, um, and also to structure your own conversations and deliberations as we go. Um, ultimately landing at a recommended alignment and rationale um, that you'll be populating, and because we're coming back to this at different times, everything you do day by day is going to enhance and make it easier for you to jump back in the discussion um, after a couple of weeks off. So in the terms of reference, we identified that there are gonna be some 
constraints on the panel. And constraints sounds like a kind of a, a limiting word, but they're meant to be useful constraints. Now I'll say, you can choose to ignore these constraints. This is your panel. But when you ignore some constraints, like for example, if you were to say, this road should have no stop signs, um, that makes it hard for them to actually act on it. So you decide for yourselves the extent to which these constraints will guide your work and what these constraints mean to you. And wherever you want clarity, we'll bring in our uh, colleagues from the city staff to help uh, provide some clarity. But I want to share this with you up front. So first of all, it has to be grade separated, which as I said earlier, means separating the forms of traffic from the rail line. So that has to be an overpass or an underpass. And the, the um, existing um, ideas of what it could look like will all include that. Secondly, it needs to be connected with Main and Prior Streets to the west and Clark Drive to the east between Prior and Terminal Avenue. So Main and Prior is where it currently starts and then it's gotta connect somewhere to Clark and it's gotta be in the right um, zone so that we get nice arterial spacing. Thirdly, it has to be reliable and efficient with connections to the broader transportation network between downtown and East Vancouver. In the resources section at the back of your book, there's a glossary that takes a stab at defining what they, uh, the city believes to be reliable and efficient, and then um, we can spend more time digging into that as we um, really talk about the performance of these roads. It should be supportive of all transportation modes, including walking, cycling, transit, automobiles, and trucks. Consistent with existing policies and the False Creek Flats plan and its guiding principles. So for example, the, the current fl flats area is intended to be an industrial area and we can't just decide it has to all be, you know, uh, residential all of a sudden. Those kinds of things. Now, there's a lot of plans and policies that you just saw. So, you know, um, wherever we can try to find clarity about what's existing, what the existing uh, approaches are, we'll try to do that. And then lastly, is it's not likely to put an undue fiscal burden on the city of Vancouver or other levels of government and funding partners. This is a more of a qualitative piece. This is harder to define. What is an undue fiscal burden, especially as we want to weigh the various costs and drawbacks and thinking about not just for today, but for the long term. So this is, this is one that there is no um, mandate from on high, but instead it's really to think about, you know, uh, to not put a, I don't know, an escalator up for each individual because it just it's too much investment. But this is really up to you to figure out. So it's just to think about, but not necessarily um, a directive about what that means. Right, and so how we're gonna do this work is through a series of steps, um, particularly starting with processing and thinking about and assessing information that we're hearing uh, over the first four days before we kind of turn the corner through the last parts of the process to actually start thinking about uh, what are the key information and what's the recommendation moving towards. And so we think of this kind of with an analogy where all the information that you are having and getting um, from the presentation so far to what we'll be hearing throughout the remainder of our time together um, are the inputs or the ingredients. And then you also are part of that mix, but um, through the process that we put together and the work that you do, the discussions that we have and the deliberations that you undertake with one another um, in working with that information, you are going to come up with and uh, come up with our bakery goods that are going to be the product in the report that you create. And so there's gonna be times we're doing things and we'll get into what those are gonna be next, where you're like, why are we having this conversation right now? What's with this note card? What? The reason that we're doing it is because you're starting to assemble your final report um, as you go step by step um, collectively. And so that's kind of the baking analogy is just one way we try to think about keeping all of these things uh, consistent and moving forward um, through the process that we do together. And I think one important thing to add on to that is that you folks are writing the report. You won't be kind of giving ideas at the tables and then sending it over to a black box for us to kind of turn out what we think you said. Every day, as you do your work, that is the structure of the final report. And of course, we'll you know we'll support you to tie it all together, and you'll get and then you'll have a chance to review it and make comments on it. But this is not um, this is yours. This is your product, and we're going to support you to make it happen. And hopefully, it'll be as tasty as this. <laughs> okay. So what does this look like? So today we're doing some orientation, and then we're going to go through four day, um, three days tomorrow um, onwards, and the site tour to learn using those six factors. Then you'll come up with that, those evaluation criteria, the list of advantages and drawbacks. We're gonna take that to a public workshop. So that's on March 5th. 
and the public will have a chance to learn a little bit about what you've learned at and review your list of advantages and drawbacks. So we know, did we miss anything? And then um, we'll come back and that, the next morning after the public workshop, we'll report back on what we heard, we'll give you an analysis of the feedback, and then you'll figure out how do we integrate that. Then we're gonna assess the root alignment. So on days five and six, we'll go through each of them and say, okay, given our list of drawbacks and advantages on all these topics, transportation performance, business impact, resident impact, and so on. How do we actually make sense of the route as a whole? Where do, what do we think are its advantages and drawbacks as a whole route? That's what we're gonna do when we get here. So before, it's looking through the lenses of the factors, and when we get to five and six, that's when we start to really do a lot of deliberation about the alignments as a whole. Then we'll take the outcomes of that work to a public workshop one more time and say, what do you think? How did they do? Is there anything that you want to tell these, your co-citizens about the work they're done. And then on day seven, we'll make our final recommendation. And the important thing I want to hold as we do this work is that nothing is decided until everything is decided. Which means that we can explore and go down certain paths and try stuff out. And if as we get towards doing that, we say, oh, you know what, actually, I now I'm not so sure about that. I want to backtrack and do check out something in a different direction in terms of the work we're doing. That's the space of this work, to, to really explore together. So that's why that's, the recommendation really happens on the last day. The more detailed version of this is that um, we're going to be doing um, the, um, each day different things. And you've got an, uh, a printout of this in your guide, but I just wanted you to have the uh, detailed version. So today we're doing the introductions and project context, and then we'll talk about what's important. and then. Transportation and cost uh, tomorrow, business and community livability on February 9th, parks and uh, recreation, community gardens, public facilities on February 23rd, then our public workshop. So you can just see here, day by day, how we're going to be approaching the work. Um, does anybody know what page that's on, if anybody was looking for it? It's just after the clear. In your, in your clear tab under working together. Thank you. You can see this right back. Awesome. So yeah, if you have any questions about that, there's also a deep, uh, an overview of the agenda of all the following days. Thank you. So back over to you to close this out. Right. And so the reason that we kind of pull things together this way is because um, we're going to be hearing a lot of information. We're going to be having a lot of discussions and, and deliberations and new things that may surprise us or that we may not be anticipating for you individually and as a group um, may emerge. and. As we're thinking um, for, from a team perspective of how we support you, um, our kind of guiding, uh, our guiding kind of star for this is always, is what we're doing going to help us get here? And so when we're making decisions and we're trying to determine how we move ahead or do we do something, uh, pivot or something like that, um, our team uses this mandate to try to structure our work and so that we are doing everything that we possibly can um, to get to allow you all to get here together um, because that's our role as, as uh, a team and as facilitators. And so that's one of the key things that we want to do. And because of the way that this is going to happen um, and the way that the time together is is structured. Um, we've also included some guidelines for discussion that we want to run through before we start having our discussion. And this um, is on page five. Yes, and so our apologies if it's a little bit of uh, talking from the front, sort of an extended piece going on here. Um, these would have been spread out had we not had the outdoor activity. Um, so we're on page five and we're, uh, we're going to move into a table discussion shortly. Um, and so, uh, because we're doing different type of work, we're not here having the same type of conversation or trying to get to the same place as we would if we were getting together for a meal or coffee or, or dinner and drinks. Um, we think about how we do that, how we engage with one another in some particular ways that we want to keep in mind um, because of the, part of the nature of the, the mandate itself and because of uh, the richness of our experience in the room and perspectives so what we want to uh, walk through very briefly is just some guidelines for our discussions together in our small groups. So one thing that we asked, and we already began seeing some of this, is that um, we stay in learning mode together. Um, and particularly as we're hearing from a wide range of experts, um, there may be things that you, and, and perspectives that you know and are familiar with. There may be things that are brand new. There may be things that um, touch on or uh, or make you feel like, oh, or pull back a little bit and say, I don't know if I agree with that. That's okay, and that's part of this, And but we ask you to stay open to that possibility because it's a key aspect of what we're
we're aiming for when we um, work together to try to pull out uh, the key information for everyone here, as well as your neighbors and those who will be uh, hearing the recommendations. And in that same vein, to maintain a positive attitude. There are real lived issues on the table that where people, this decision will affect people in profound ways, livelihoods, where we live, how we move around the city. These are very, very serious issues. And yet, I ask you to maintain a positive attitude as you do the work, to stay curious and say, um, so for me, I do a lot of work around dialogue and deliberation. For me, I know dialogue has happened. If I can walk away from the conversation saying, I still don't agree with you, but I understand now why you think the way you do. And we can only understand why other people think the way they do is if we're curious. So I encourage you to be curious and try to stay positive. Smiling goes a long way. And part of that also is listening with care um, to one another, to the experts that you're hearing. Um, and when you're sharing, whether it's your reflections on what you've heard or um, experiences from your life and how you think and how these things may, may impact you going forward. Um, assuming good intent from those who are around you and sharing is a great starting point to be open um, even, and this is particularly important in the case where you might not agree with what someone is saying, um, but trying to get to that understanding of where they're coming from or why they might be sharing with you is, is important. So that's a key principle that we think of. Keep focused on the issue. Um, there are lots of related conversations to have, like what's gonna happen with the fire hall site and what will happen with Strathcona's new uh, community center. Very, very related, but tangential, because our mandate is just to determine what's the route gonna be. And so we encourage you as much as possible to keep your stories and ideas and conversations really focused on the routes themselves. And, and as the, after the route is selected, there's gonna be lots of layers of public engagement and stakeholder engagement to define all those other interesting parts about the road, the, the road itself. Similarly with that one, um, and we'll try to model this as much as we can, speak clearly and concisely to one another, both in your tables and uh, particularly when interacting and when we're doing Q and A's with experts, this is really important because we know there's gonna be a lot of questions and these are great opportunities to have uh, those folks in, in the room with us to respond. We want to be able to field as many of those and, and foster those interactions as much as possible. And so um, being clear and sharp and, con and concise with our delivery and this ties into staying focused is really helpful in just keeping us going and getting the most out of our time, particularly when it's more limited with our experts. And um, participate fully. Some of us are talkers, <laughs> and some of us are a bit more quiet. To really um, be able to pull back when you're taking up a lot of space, and if you've got something to share, please don't hold back and do lean in. And let's all take care of each other and make sure we're sharing that space and, and showing up as fully as we can. And as we know, uh, disagreement is likely to happen. We're not bring you all here to agree on everything. Uh, we just don't want to revert to this squawking at one another um, and uh, getting into uh, raised voices. We um, invite and know that there are a wide range of opinions and perspectives on this. We're trying to understand what are the common values that can underlie and support a, a decision on this issue. Um, and in that process, we anticipate that there will be moments of disagreement and we just ask that um, we do uh, experience those moments of disagreements and, and act in ways that help us uh, all work together to understand one another more effectively and get us to our goal. Yeah, using term, phrases like, I see it really differently, um, or thanks for sharing that, I've never thought about it that way, or I can see that's really important to you. Those kinds of things of just acknowledging our difference before kind of saying, hey buddy, you're wrong. <laughs> It'll go a long way to be able to work to each other. So we hope these guidelines are useful to you as we do a work together. So we're gonna move into going back to this conversation that we started outside about what's important to you and the values. And um, this conversation, although you didn't see the steps, actually goes through the discussion rhythm that we're gonna use for all the conversations. It's four steps. The first step is think. Often there is a chance for you to write down your ideas onto a card or a piece of paper. And then the second is share, or, or is to listen. So we'll go around and each one of us will share an idea. And we turn to listen to each other. Then, after we've gotten all the ideas on the table, we're gonna discuss what's common, what's different, where are the connections, what haven't we covered? And then finally, we'll get to decide And though, at the table. So you'll say, here's what's most important from the conversation at our table. 
So um, you've done some of these steps already. So you uh, to reflect, to think individually, and you've got a uh, sheet here, I guess it'll be in uh, five, perhaps, the orange tab, sorry, note-taking forms. Uh, it'll be page two in the orange tab, what's important. And you've already started to think about this, so you may or may not use the sheet now, but you're welcome to use it if you're a writer. I personally, I always love to write my ideas down, so that way I can just fully listen to the person who's talking, and I don't have to think about, what. If, okay, what am I gonna say, what am I gonna say? So that's for me. So you've done some of that already, you've done some listening, you've done some discussing, and that's actually where you're gonna start to come in at this, uh, in this conversation, is that your facilitators will bring you to step three, to discuss the similarities and differences, and maybe see if there's anything that needs to get additionally shared from the step two. And you'll identify your table's top two or three personal values. Then, I also want you to think about um, sharing some of your citywide priorities, and I know that they're not necessarily totally distinct, but your facilitator will kind of encourage you to see if there are distinctions there, and think about how can we successfully attend to both personal and citywide values in our work, and I talked a bit about that. So that's what we're about to do with the tables. Um, facilitators, if you want to grab your flip charts and bring them over, and if uh, folks around the room with Angela and uh, Andrew can help bring the, um, the flip charts over, and there's a question at the back. Yeah, no, no. Sorry, about just the slide that you said these strengths. Yes. Um, I just wanted to clarify the, so I know it's focused on the weather, so is it completely off the table um, to have any other entry point other than prior yeah, and main? Like it has to start there? Go to like a national main. Long the room. Um, so the question was, does the arterial road have to start at Main and Prior, or could it connect in a diff uh, to a different um, road network? Yeah. Long. And, and so the, the short answer is yes. It has to start at Main and Prior, and he'll give us just a quick reason why. Uh, yeah, the, uh, I mean, the, the hospital plan is pretty well uh, advanced, and so a notion of kind of cutting through the hospital, uh, our, our road network's kind of limited. Uh, we had looked at options where you could pass through National to get to Quebec, but that actually doesn't serve uh, the connection to the downtown. And the, uh, the intersections of the new replacement, replacement road network for the viaducts uh, are really operating quite optimally, and any kind of mess of that, it actually, the whole project kind of falls apart. We have really key intersections at Pacific and, and uh, Quebec, and then at Prior and Maine, and at Georgia and Pacific. Like those, those intersections are functioning right at their maximum. Thank you, and you can imagine that you'd end up kind of with this bit of an S-curve, you know, maybe going down Maine and then back in, and it would really slow down the, the traffic flow. Um, all right, if you have more of those questions, write them down on an index card, pass them to me or your table facilitator, we'll see if we can get those answered. And um, table facilitators, let's try to do this in about 25 minutes. What time is it? I have my watch over here. Yeah, that'll, that'll do as well, if you can do it in about 25 minutes and then we'll break for lunch. Thank you.